Hey everybody out there, this is Seto Kaiba from your Yu-Gi-Oh! chat channel. And I know I usually profile decks that I play, you know, in real life and everything, guys, but I don't have this deck currently. I'm currently building this deck, and I should have it done within the next three to four weeks, hopefully. The next month I should have this card deck done. But first, more over the deck profile, I'll talk to you about Archfiends and stuff like that, and hopefully it gives you a couple of pointers and suggestions for the deck. So first off, I run three Genesis Archfiend. He's kind of like your mini boss monster of the deck. He's very good. I run two Archfiend General because I run the Pandemonium uh, a field spell card, which I'll explain later why I chose that over the new one. I run three Archfiend Cavalry, two Mass uh, Chalmeleon, two Trance Archfiends, one Armageddon Knight, two Tour Guide of the Underworld, three Trick Archfiend, one Dark Hole, one Foolish Burial, two MSTs, one Book of Moon, two Lance, two Falling Down, two Pandemonium. Off uh, traps, we run a lot of different traps, so we run one Bottomless, two Mirror Force, one Torrential. I'll explain to you how I only run two Roar Archfiends, one Compulse, two Chains, and two Call the Haunted. Okay, extra deck, we run Ar Red Dragon Archfiend. You can run uh, Red Jewel Dragon Archfiend if you want to. I just ran this guy because this deck is based off cards that are in the real world. You know, cards that are out or are currently coming out, stuff like that. So one dra Red Dragon Archfiend, one Crimson Blader, one Scrappy, one Scrap Archfiend, uh, one Neo Guys Techion Dragon. Yes, you can make this card very easily in this deck. One Gemini Pearl, one Pappy, one Black Ship of Corn, one Diamond Direwolf, one Maestro, one Gaga -ga Cowboy, one Leviathan Dragon, uh, Leviathan, one Levier, and two wind ups in mines because that's the way you get Trick Archfiend's effect off. Okay, so first off, I want to explain to you about these two cards down here. Um, Archfiend Commander. If anybody knows when this card is coming out, maybe I'm just oblivious to when it's coming out, but uh, I looked online, I Google searched it, I went on some forums, I asked some people, and nobody knows when this card is actually coming out. Um, Maybe it's coming out in, you know, the next set we're having, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me with the, you know, everything else, but I don't know when this card is technically coming out. Um, last, the only thing I kept see seeing was that it was up for a vote and a V-jump uh, issue and it didn't win. And I really like this card because if you're running the deck online, I would run this card at two. He is very good. There's a lot of different combo plays you can do off him and I really, really like him. The reason I'm not running Archfiend Palace is because I like Pandemonium. With Archfiend Palace, you usually get a boost for your Archfiends. So you either go in with a beatdown type theme with Archfiends, or you're going with kind of a control theme. What I mean by that is with Pandemonium, uh, Pandemonium on the field, excuse me, you're always going to have cards in hand. You constantly will keep getting cards to hand. You're thinning your deck. You're getting cards to hand, and I like that. That's what I like doing with my decks. Then need my decks and getting cards to hand. So you get two searches off if you get like Trick Archfiend or something like that. So it really, really comes in handy. So that's why you have two Archfiend Generals to search up two Pandemoniums. You don't usually need more than two. If you want to run three, be my guest. If you already have one Pandemonium in hand and you have one on the field, you can just use the other Archfiend General as a 21 beat stick. That's, no, that's pretty good in my book. Uh, Archfiend Cavalry, you know what he does? The Master Chalmeleon, because we have three Cavalry, we got three Trick Archfiends, so you have six targets, and with six targets out there, you're able to run two Master Chalmeleons, and you can make some good synchros, and ex uh, excuse me, good, some good synchros with this card. And Trick Archfiend, pretty much you can, do, if you have Trick in hand, you have Archfiend, you summon the Archfiend, you pop, you, you know where I'm going with this. Um... Armageddon Knight, I only run one because usually when I summon him, he's going to get destroyed, but I'm able to send Trick to the graveyard, get a search off, stuff like that. Uh, Dark Hole, everything else is self-explanatory. The reason I want MST is because Archfiends usually fall to Dimensional Prison and stuff like that. Uh, we're not worried about Mirror Force, we're not worried about Torrential because we get our effects off that. 
but we are worried about things like deep prisons and bottomlesses, and that's where we run lance. If you want to run three lance, this is the deck to do it, but um, I only own two lance, so that's why I do that. Two falling down, it's kind of like a, um, I guess you could say it's a lesser version. Uh, it's not as good as Snatch and Steel was, but it's very good. Uh, you can make, use this card to make exceeds and steal big monsters. Like I said before, I chose to run Pandemonium. I am kind of up in the air about either I'm going to run Pandemonium in the deck I'm building in real life, or I'm going to run Archfiend Palace. Um, both have pros and cons to each. Both have pros and cons, and you know it's up to you to choose what you want to draw. If Archfiend Commander was out right now, I'd be probably running the Archfiend Palace version. But one bottomless, everything else is self-explanatory. The reason why I only run two Archfiend War is because that it does take up 500 life points. And you may think, oh, that's not that much. But literally, I've activated this card, thinking not too much of it. And the next turn, the guy went for Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy and shot me down. So after that, I was like, okay, okay. You know, only going for one. And the fact that, you know, falling down with, you know, giving up 800 life points, you may think not much of it, but towards the end of a duel, it, you know, can, it can come to bite you back in the ass, So if you know what I'm saying. Uh, Call of the Haunted is very good because if somebody wants to blind MST you, they blind MST Call of the Haunted, you bring Trick Archfiend back, they, you know, it dies, you get the search off it. And Scrap Dragon is very good in this deck because you pretty much have Fiendish Chains, you have Call of the Haunted, they're going to stay on the field, you know, after you use them. And you can just use Scrap Arch Fiend, make Scrap Arch Fiend stop popping stuff, you know, just with Call of the Haunted, you know, useless stuff you have in the back row. So it's very good, actually, in this deck. He's, he's actually won me some games. He's actually won me about two or three games online. But that is my Arch Fiend deck. If you have any questions about the deck, please feel free. If you know when Archfiend Commander is actually going to come out, uh, please let me know. I don't know yet. I have talked and asked people, and they don't know either. But please let me know, and this is my Archfiend deck. Oh, one more thing, though. The way you make Tekion Dragon, if you're wondering, you bring this back. You bring Genesis Archfiend back by either using Archfiend's War or Call of the Haunted. You normal summon another one. Then you overlay and make Tekion Dragon. That's how you make your level weights. But yep, yeah, till next time everybody, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling, and hope you like Archfiends guys, they're a pretty fun deck to play. Take care everybody, Seto Kaiba, I'm out of here.